Hey everybody, Jack here from Peach Guitars and today I'm going to walk you through some of the fine offerings from Gibson's acoustic collection of guitars. But before I do, I just want to remind you to please like this video if you enjoy it and make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel too. Okay, so as I have done so far with the brands Loudon and Martin, I wanted to turn some attention to one of my favorite acoustic guitar brands of all time. It's one of the most popular in the world for very good reason. And I wanted to spend a bit of time today walking you through what makes up the different components of some of their very best models. So of course I'm talking about Gibson guitars, and we've seen uh, this year and last year a real resurgence of the kind of um, bona fide historic qualities that made Gibson guitars so great coming back. So they've had a real resurgence, they've paid a lot of attention to the details that made these historic models so fantastic. And now in 2020 this is probably the best year in Gibson's history for current production acoustic guitars as well as electric guitars too. So now seems like a great time to talk through some of their offerings in detail. So I think the brand as a whole, as do all other acoustic guitar brands, have a real identity and that despite the fact that they have a huge uh, wealth of different guitar body sizes and shapes that they can offer you, I think there's definitely a Gibson sound. And now, as I said before, they've refined it so that 2020, they're making instruments better than ever before that represent that kind of quality. So it can be a little bit difficult to decipher the differences between the models and the body sizes and what each one will do for you tonally, and in, also in terms of player comfort. But that's what I wanted to try and break down today. Um, but just to kind of put out there what I think the essence of the brand is, I think Gibson guitars are rock. That's the kind of sound of classic rock, if you're predominantly a rock electric player and you're looking for a great strummer, I think Gibson acoustic guitars do that better than anything else you could possibly pick up on the market. They sound great for finger style as well. They've got, usually got quite a lot of strong mid-range content. Um, and basically I think they do sound quite synonymous to what Gibson electrics sound like. They've got a strong mid-range. Usually you're seeing wood combinations of mahogany with a spruce top as well. And that kind of puts you in mind of classic tones anyway, as soon as you hear it and as soon as you play it. But Gibson guitars, I think, despite being able to cover a lot of tonal ground, they're pure rock machines. And that's why I, as a predominantly electric player, love them so much. I also would just like to throw in a disclaimer here in the fact that I haven't picked guitars that all have exactly the same wood combinations. I think that's kind of detrimental to each body size and certain wood combinations will suit different body sizes better than others. So I've just picked five guitars that not only represent the body styles I want to talk about, but the wood combinations behind them that I think best serve that purpose too. So th th there's no kind of continuation factor of the body woods being the same, but just bear in mind that I think these wood combinations work best with each body style. Okay, so now that you've heard that back-to-back -back sound clip, hopefully you'll get an understanding of what the different body sizes will offer you. And maybe it's a little bit surprising to note that some of the bigger body styles actually can sound just as mellow and pretty and kind of compressed sounding as the smaller body sizes. And I think that that's kind of the magic of Gibson guitars. They've got a self compression going onto them that makes it very, very easy to play. And it makes every string sa uh, stand out from, an from one another in a very even kind of fashion. So I think that that tonally means that you can really lay into them. You can strum them quite hard and you can also finger pick with them. And there's a nice consist consistency of tone there that doesn't kind of, um, the dynamic range doesn't sway too much up and down which I think makes them some of the best sounding and best feeling guitars to play. Okay, so before I delve in and start talking about the specifics of each model, I wanted to record a back-to-back -back comparison so that you can hear the different properties of the body sizes as we go.
Okay, so let me start off here with the smallest body size that I've got of the collection today. And it's also one of Gibson's oldest designs. This is the L00 model. And despite being such a small guitar, as I said in the introduction about the way that Gibson's kind of self-compress, this is actually one of the most versatile guitars that I think they do. Naturally, you would assume this kind of body size will appeal mainly to the guys who want to play finger style and maybe kind of um, 30s and 40s blues licks. Of course, it does that very, very well. It's complemented by a mahogany back and side and spruce top wood combination, which is a classic kind of uh, mid-range focused kind of beam tone that I think works really well for those styles. But that self-compression element also means that you can strum quite comfortably on this guitar. It sounds great for kind of flat picking and folk strumming. It responds very, very well to having a capo put on the neck as well because those high harmonics ring out in a very pleasing way. But the thing I really like about all Gibson acoustics, and it certainly applies to this L00, is that the high frequencies never get harsh. They're all very nicely rounded, very smooth, and it means that you can really dig into this guitar and play it quite hard and never fear that you're gonna be overcome by the treble frequencies. Okay, so moving on to the next body size, this is arguably one of the best body designs ever created for acoustic guitar, and it's certainly one of my favorites. This is the J45. So as opposed to many other dreadnought size instruments that you'll see out on the market, this is a sloped shoulder dreadnought. So it basically just means that the body has slightly less mass to it, and I think that gives it a different tonal property. You get quite a lot more low mids with a J45 or a sloped shoulder style dreadnought than you would with, say, a Martin D18 or something like the Songwriter or the Hummingbird that I'll talk about later. I think these guitars sound a little bit darker, they have a little bit more compression to them, and it makes them an absolute breeze to play any style on these guitars. They're notorious for um, being great fingerstyle guitars, but you saw a lot of rock artists in the 60s and 70s using these just as great strumming machines, playing some lead lines on them as well. They really take whatever you throw at them and just spit it out in a real musical kind of a way. So with all that said, the classic wood combination of a mahogany back and sides with a spruce top worked very well for J45s for years and years. There have been variations where you've had rosewood back and sides on the custom models, but I don't think they work quite as well to get across the point of what a J45 really does well, which is that very strong mid-range, very nicely compressed warm tone. This particular J45 that I'm playing today is actually a really special guitar. This is a limited edition version for the 125th anniversary that Gibson put out a couple of years ago. And as such, it's got some special appointments that make this a little bit more premium than most other J45s you'd see. However, it's still got this classic combination of the figured mahogany back and sides, this time with a Lutz spruce top with a different finish to what you'd usually see on a J45. Um, you've also got the LR Bags VTC pickup in this guitar as well, so it works electronically really well if you want to take this out and record or play a gig with. So one other defining characteristic of the J45 model, I would say, is the fact that it has a slightly shorter scale length than most acoustic guitars, and it's a scale length that is synonymous with Gibson Electrics as well. You've got a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale on this guitar, which coupled with this particular wood combination, the mahogany and the spruce, I think lends it its signature darker tone. But if you like this kind of body size and you want something a little bit brighter, you can look at the Advanced Jumbo model, which has the same kind of spec, but usually you'll see that with a rosewood back and sides and a 25 and a half inch scale. So that adds a little bit more top end and a bit more clarity.
Okay, so moving on to another Gibson Dreadnought size. This is the Hummingbird. And this um, actually compares quite closely to the J45 I would have just shown you. But there's a couple of crucial differences in the kind of genetic makeup of this instrument that make it just have a different tonal kind of signature. So um, in terms of the woods used on this guitar, this is a Hummingbird Deluxe Rosewood Edition for 2019. So obviously it's got rosewood back and sides coupled with a Sitka spruce top. That has a very distinct um, tonal character over the mahogany back and sides on the J45. Uh, but also you've got a slightly larger squared off um, kind of up about the body size as well. So it's a little bit more in keeping with traditional dreadnought sounds that you would be more familiar with than the J45 that I showed you before. So it's a little bit brighter. Thanks to the rosewood on the back and sides, this guitar has a little bit more of a scooped mid-range, a bit more emphasis in the lower and upper frequencies. And I think this guitar really, really excels at kind of very delicate chord voicings. And you can really rock out on this kind of thing as well. I think this, this kind of instrument to me is synonymous with players like Keith Richards, who was using a hummingbird in the late 60s um, on all that classic stone stuff. So I think it's got a real rock pedigree to it. And it's got a little bit more clarity than the J45 would do as well. So if you're more of a lead player maybe, I think you might find this kind of instrument sounds a little bit more in keeping with keeping those single notes sounding strong, bright and crisp. So I want to finish up today with arguably one of the most iconic and important designs that Gibson ever developed back in the 30s, the SJ200, so the super jumbo body, style, uh, body size. Obviously it's one of the largest acoustic guitars that you'll find, but contrary to what you might expect out of this instrument, um, it's often dubbed the Whispering Giant because despite being such a big guitar, it's actually capable of a lot of intricate delicacy. So it really works well for finger style, and when you do strum it quite hard, that self-compression element comes in and it actually means that you get quite a mellow um, but still very percussive and attacky kind of a sound. It's a really unique kind of contradiction that you, you don't really hear out of any other uh, style of guitar. And it's a reason that this has stuck around for so long and it's universally very widely accepted all the way from players of the 60s like Bob Dylan, Pete Townsend and guys like that up to modern day artists like the 1975 and guys like that are still using these kind of instruments because they're just so unique and versatile at the same time. So spec wise, what makes this guitar so unique aside from the super jumbo body size is the fact that the wood combination differs from anything else that Gibson put out. You've got the standard spruce wood top, but you've got maple back and sides on this guitar and the maple has a unique kind of tone. I think it's a little bit lacking in the mid range. It's got a lot more treble content and it just means that uh, coupled with all the other elements that go into this guitar's design, I think it really speaks in a unique way and it just means that it's kind of got a, a sonic signature that doesn't sound like anything else. It's, it's big but it's also distant at the same time and it's, it's a really unique sound and I think that most players will find a use for a guitar like this. Um, also being a Gibson and all the other elements of their, their kind of tonal design that I've talked about so far, this is one of the easiest acoustic guitars in the world to play so that's why it makes such a great strummer. It makes a great flat picker, it makes a great finger style guitar, basically does it all, but in a very different way to a J45 or a Hummingbird. One other thing I would just say, if anyone hasn't played a Super Jumbo style guitar before, don't be alarmed and put off by the size, because even though it is such a big guitar, as I said, it's very, very comfortable to play, and you really never find yourself struggling as you might do with some other brands, larger instruments, um, to get a great sound out of it. You don't have to work that hard to really push the top of this guitar. It's very resonant naturally. And it just means that whatever you do, no matter how delicately you play or how hard you play, this instrument just compresses and puts forward its sound in a really pleasing way. As with all the other guitars I've shown you in this video today, this guitar is equipped with an LR Bags VTC pickup as well.
Okay, so as I did with our Martin comparison video, it would be remiss of me if I didn't talk about some 12 string guitars, even though this has more or less the same body profile as the Hummingbird that I just showed you. This is a songwriter 12 string, um, and I think that the 12 strings that Gibson make are really among the very best in the world. They're certainly one of the easiest guitars to play if you're looking for a 12 string. And coupled with a few of the other Gibson characteristics that I've talked about before, like the self-compression kind of element to the tone, I think these, uh, these sound more balanced than any other 12 string I've played, and they feel more balanced thanks to the unique neck profile that Gibson uses as well. This particular model has rosewood back and sides with a spruce top, a mahogany neck and a rosewood fingerboard, and that's kind of the magic combination to really excel at pushing out all those um, really detailed harmonics that you get from a 12 string. But at the same time, it blends it all together, meshes it very nicely, and it never sounds out of place whether you're strumming or playing some single note finger style stuff as well. So obviously being a 12 string with the extra tension going on on this guitar, you probably want an extended scale length, and that's exactly what Gibson give you in this guitar. You've got a 25.4 inch scale. So you get a little bit more tension and that allows the details of the 12 string sound to ring out a little bit more clearly. Okay, so there we are. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, overview that I've given you today of Gibson acoustic guitars. I think it's something that people don't talk about too often, Gibson acoustics, and it's really one of the most prestigious and valuable brands that we have as guitar players that I think we should all pay a little bit more attention to. So if you're interested in Gibson acoustics and you want to check out the rest of the range, uh, aside from the guitars I've talked about today, do yourself a favor and go to peachguitars.com where you'll see the full inventory of Gibson acoustics that we've currently got in stock. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please do us a favor, like the video down below. You can comment down there with your thoughts as well. Let me know which of these five classic designs is your personal favorite. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll look forward to seeing you then.